Niji Sanji can't keep quiet the people who are speaking out against them. Their stock prices are dropping. Quinn Benet also reached 100k and other stories today on this small segment of Niji Sanji News. Here is something new that popped up with Razio Romanic. If we remember about Razio Romanic, she's the one who spread the recent document of Luka Kaneshiro, the one that was blocked on Google. The one that has tons and tons and tons of backups because that's the way things work. If you cut off one head, 20 heads will prevail and will pop up. And I'm very happy about that. So she's mentioning more stuff. It says, sadly, not an April Fool's joke. There are people at Nidhi Sanji EN currently facing harassment from their fellow co-workers. I hope management gets their stuff together and they receive the help that they need. Luca harassing other co-workers. I received a message from the same Nidhi Sanji EN liver about Luca harassing others inside of Nidhi Sanji EN. The message read, Luca has done a lot of bad things, not just to you. So thank you for sharing your experience. This is after she decided to share some stuff about Luca. They also sent me a message reading, a lot of people waited for you to tell the truth for a while because it had been an issue. So I'm happy you finally did. For their privacy, I will neither share the full screenshot nor their name publicly. These messages are what prompted me to make this document. Of course, she does not want to dox anybody. And further moving on to today or like an hour after she wrote this, this was two hours before I'm doing this recording. So one hour after that, she wrote for extra context, I had a third party verify the DMs. I'm not sharing them as they contain information that would reveal who the individual is. I know it's hard not seeing the source, but I want to protect the person who confided in me. This section has been in the original document since I put it out a couple of days ago. It has been there since it was put out. And I respect 100% the desire to protect your sources. Journalists do that all the time. Other people do that all the time. And here's the thing. Remember, Nidhi Sanji is a toxic place right now, or at least it is alleged to be a toxic place. The allegations, the, the theories, the allegations of other people are saying that it is a toxic workplace right now. We know by their the contract that we have seen that it is not the best you know working conditions to start off with. They try to take a lot of your rights, a lot of things that are unenforceable in Western countries they put into their, their contract. So it is not unbelievable that someone is confided in her and someone does not want to be known because it could bring more pain as what happened with Selene after the, the last cup of coffee incident where she was supposedly approached by a lot of different Nidhi Sanji livers saying that she made a mistake, that she shouldn't have done this, etc., which gave her a lot of stress and caused a lot of struggle and pain for her. So we don't want that to happen to whoever it is who confided in her. And I fully, fully agree with her not saying a dang thing. We are now going to be talking about Quinn Monet, who a lot of people may or may not know. He used to be a part of Nidhi Sanji as Kyokaniko, and he recently graduated and decided to go back into his past life account and create a new one specifically for VTubing activities. I'm not going to mention anything about the actual IRL past life account. You can search it and probably find it on YouTube if you so pleased, but I am not going to be the one to spread that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to let you know that they reached a milestone that they had reached Nidhi Sanji before, but the advantage of this milestone is the same way that Matara Khan from Vishojo reached it, the same way that K9 Kudo from Vishojo reached it, the same way that Doki Bird reached it. They all now get to keep their play buttons one thing that was not allowed in their previous company, or at least the previous company did not did not want to pay them enough to get the extra for them. I understand keeping one for the company itself. I've always said this. I understand keeping one for the company itself, but pay the extra to have it for your actual talents, the ones who make you the money, because Hololive does that. Hololive, in fact, for Fuamoko, which are twins, they gave one to each of them. They could have just given one for the channel, but they paid even extra so that each twin can have it. That is a little bit of extra that goes a long way for things like loyalty, in my opinion, and things like that. But Quinn Benet, before Nidhi Sanji, as well as Kenan Kuro and Matara Khan, when they were back in their old company, did not get to keep it that way. And now here it is, the 100k subscribers, they get to get a free one sent to them for getting to 100k subscribers. And that is amazing for him. I am glad that he got to that point. Finally, the hard work is actually paying off in the sense that they will get something physical that they can hold in their hands and say, yes, this is my YouTube play button. This is not a company's play button. This is not one, one that I get to see put on a wall. This is mine that I get to keep in my room and put up on a wall if I want or put up like next to my bed, put it on the on the desk or whatever the heck they want. This is a humongous accomplishment and I'm glad that they were finally able to get this. We're also going to talk a bit about the funny little number that's going on in Nidhi Sanji right now 
the stock of Anycolor, which is the parent company of Nidhi Sanji, and they have not had really good uh, numbers when it comes to their stock prices. This is understandable because they are embroiled in a lot of controversies right now. Luka Kaneshiro situation happened with the whole interview that False ID did, the whole big paperwork that False ID helped Raziel put through, the fact that it has been verified by a third party source, and uh, there is a lot of receipts. There are a ton of receipts on that one. It is keeping the stock prices pretty low. As you can tell right there, it started out uh, around 2510 when it started and it has stayed around 2434 it hasn't really strayed from that number very much as we know when it first started before the Selen Tatsuki incident because they had bought back some of their stocks they were around 3600 before the Selen Tatsuki uh, horrible termination the way that they handled it the way everything went it was a PR disaster and it of course affected their numbers greatly these numbers being very important for investor confidence, for confidence when it comes to venture capitalists, to anybody that wants to actually have uh, any form of investment in what they're doing. You can't have numbers this low and continue to be pushing yourself as like the number one in the spot of VTubing. And uh, investors are a squirrely bunch. Investors are a bunch that will not tolerate things like this. So of course, when you have these types of situations, uh, the idea of stock buybacks, again, happen. Uh, they can't do that as far as I know until about a year after they initially did it. It may be a fiscal year situation, but a lot of organizations don't like allowing a lot of like stock exchanges don't like allowing a lot of stock buybacks because it will definitely erode confidence due to it not actually being investors that buy it, but the company itself. So that kind of seems like they are just artificially inflating the stock price in order to make themselves look better. Investors can see that, investors can investigate that, and that can drop your rating in the stock market, among other things. Of course, I'm not a professional at this, but I have done stock trading in the past. I do invest for myself, so I kind of have ideas of how an investor would think in these situations, and it's not good. Kuro Sanji, Niji Sanji, Niji Kuro, whatever you want to call them, has decided to pigeonhole, memory hole, certain people as i showed in a previous video this was their original work here with nina kosaka you had pomo rain puff at the top left then you had selen middle then at the other one you had mr rias near the top left here and you've memory hold them all you just removed them and uh, you didn't even try to really uh organize spacing too much you just literally removed them which is funny it's it's just a literal removal not even reorganizing, not even re-centering uh, things, just a literal free space in the middle of all those things. And that is, that is lazy, that is Niji Sanji, that is what Niji Sanji has shown that they do. If the editing is sloppy and shows Selen, people will be pissed. The editing is sloppy and they could somehow show bits of Pomu, Mr. and Nina, especially Nina, people will be effing livid. I don't know, but some, some seeing the altered promo art after they remove Selen, Nina, Pomu, Mr., the girl side just looks like it's missing something. Like there are a lot more open spaces if we were to compare it to the boy side. So in my opinion, it looks a bit weird. The boy side looks more filled out as there are more members. So it doesn't look strange to me. Yeah, the girl side looks very messed up. Like it just looks like ish. They just, you know, they try to keep it gen wise, I guess. But yes, yeah, does not look good. Thank you for watching this short segment. I hope you appreciated it. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. I fixed the sound issues that happened in the last one. I do apologize for that. I did not know what caused it, but I think I fixed it. Also, take a look at my social media and everything else that is right in front of you so you can take a look and see what you like. Have a good day. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.